Hey everyone, welcome back to the Simply Smarter Podcast. How's it going? Uh, well, I don't know how they're doing, but I'm doing great. Okay, how well, are you, I like Jill? it. I'm good. The sun is out currently. It's not raining. Uh, it's kind of hiding again. Yeah, but you're right. It was peeking through. It's not downpouring. <laughs> right. That's my point. <laughs> That's the win. <laughs> That's I, it. I walked over to Starbucks yesterday uh, from the office here in Leewood. How was that? And it it was misty the entire time, but it wasn't windy, so I was like, I'm just gonna walk it. I don't care. And? and my glasses were really gross by the time I got back, but it was at least kind of warm and it wasn't pouring. That's true. To your point. That is true. Mm. I, I picked up the kids from school yesterday and like the clouds were just impending. They were just dark and I was mm. like, okay, we got to get the kids out Come on. and we got to get through pickup before this rain just like pours on us. Right. Yeah. We that's, got them. It's kind of an awkward time. It is. Hmm. They're but, just like stuck outside while it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> they might <laughs> run to the cars faster maybe. though. Poor kids. They're fine. They yeah. like they like the rain. Yeah, they probably do. So it's fine for them. Hmm. At what age do you grow out of that? I mean, <laughs> don't you dance in the rain every once in a while, every seven years? <laughs> seven. <laughs> I was waiting to see how frequently you were gonna say, like every month. Well, I think when you have kids, like there are those opportunities True. to where they're outside playing in the rain and you get to be a kid again. Yeah. Oh, that's you fair. get to have a little bit of fun with them and they enjoy that. You're making memories and it's yeah. just kind of special. That's, yeah, that's adorable. Yeah, it's fun to do stuff like that every once in a while. Hmm. So what I hear you saying is without a child, it'd be weird for me to go dance around <laughs> in my driveway while it's raining. Do you want to borrow my kids? <laughs> As in, that may be weirder for my neighbors. Do you want to take care of them while my husband and I go out to dinner? <laughs> that's is actually really what, what I'm it, saying. That's called babysitting. Yes. But <laughs> do you want to do that? Yes. Okay. We're in. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. <laughs> we're locked. The time is Although now. we didn't talk about fee yet. So. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, shoot. Shoot. Yeah. Free of charge for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. This is very exciting for me. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I have an announcement. What's that? Well, we, as in you and I, on the Simply Smarter podcast, we were voted the top five ACT test podcasts by Feedspot. Wow. Look at us. Isn't that exciting? Moving right up. I know, right? That's kind of awesome. Yeah. That's I don't know how many podcasts were right. the ACT tests there are, but... <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> we're in the we're top, top five. five. <laughs> so, so exciting. So thank you for, our, for listening and Absolutely. helping us... Get, get honored in this way. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I know. It is really fun. Hmm. It's, a, it's just a fun kind of opportunity and accomplishment. And we like talking here about ACT stuff. So yeah. we're glad and, you're listening. And more importantly, helping you kind of manage the whole process. Because this is not something that you all do day in and day out like right. we do. Uh, so I think we have some good knowledge that we can share and kind of make the process a little easier for y'all. Absolutely. Speaking of making the process easier, today on the podcast, we are actually going to be talking about what to look for, what to start planning for, what to start doing the summer before your junior year. So between sophomore year and junior year, what does that look like? What steps should the students be taking or parents be helping with and what that looks like? Yeah. School's out soon. Can you believe it? I think seniors are done. Yes, some are. And then I know some have finals this week, but some are out on Wednesday, like done on Wednesday. <laughs> so weird. My kids get out at noon on Thursday. Yikes. So, wow. Summer is almost here for them. That's awesome. I think they're ready. For I think everybody's ready. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right? thinking back to how the year started, it was just so chaotic and unknown still. There's still that unknown element of right. 2020. Like, what does school look like? So Mm. we kind of made it through the first half into 2021. 2021 seems like it was running a lot more, you know, smoothly Smoothly. than 2020 for sure. (laughs) Um, And now we're just kind of wrapping that up. I know. With a bow and moving on. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Keep going. Right. I'm excited for my, I'm working with quite a few juniors right now and I'm excited for them to be finished and get to get to call, they get to call themselves seniors at at some point in the very near future. And that there's a lot of fun things that are going on in that time frame. So mm-hmm. I, I, I have fond memories of, of the summer before senior year and I into, too. Yeah. into senior year. So, so what, what did you do the summer between your sophomore year and junior year? What did, what did I that's do? That's what we're talking about yeah. specifically. So, so let's talk about that summer. Okay. 
So that summer for me, man. If you can remember I know. way back when. I can't think back <laughs> 10 decades. <laughs> no, not really. Just, just 10 years just ago. Three ish. <laughs> just kidding. Two ish. Two ish. Crazy. Um, so that summer, I was playing baseball. Mm-hmm. I played for my high school team, and then I also competed on uh, on a team for the entire state of Colorado. Oh wow! I made an all star team, and we went and traveled, and we played in uh, Bulls Head, Arizona. Oh my! And we played against the, all the regional teams. So California was there, and Nevada, and Utah, and we ended up winning. We, we ended up finishing second in that tournament. So we didn't nice. go onto the whole national thing, but yeah. it was really fun. I, it was a 16 to 18 year old team and I was the only 16 year old. So it was kind of intimidating. Wow. <laughs> Caleb, look at you, so all star. And so that was my big memory from that summer. Mm-hmm. And then from there, it was just kind of normal. Yeah. I, I didn't have a job at the time. Yeah. You were too busy being right, a was too busy baseball ball. player, killing it. Yeah. What did you do that's during that summer? Fun. That's a great. That's a great memory, yeah, by the way. That was good. I'm glad you have that. Um, I worked. I think. Did <laughs> I you? mean, <laughs> yeah. Nothing specifically stands out between that. You know, that summer between sophomore and junior year. But um, I just remember I worked a lot at Shopco. Okay. Um, which is kind of like a target for the Midwest, um, and that was. I did that quite a bit and then just hung out with my friends, babysat. So just worked a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. Hung out with friends. And hung out with friends. We went to the lake. There was a couple of my friends that had lake cabins. So there was a lake like five minutes from our town. So we Mm. would go out there and yeah, just hang out. That's fantastic. It was fun. It was just chill. You're right. Just, yeah. Yeah. No no stress. Right. Just kind of doing your thing Mm -hmm. that's awesome learning some responsibility maybe exactly yeah with some work thinking about thinking about college but i already knew where i wanted to go so sure at that point it was like i don't need to figure out which college i want to go to i already know yep so that that stress that's low stress for you yeah Mm -hmm. that's great yeah yeah so it was it was fun on the ball jill yeah totally (laughs) we totally are (laughs) very nice so so what are some things that again we still want these students to have memor- like memorable and fun summers, yeah. right? But I think that there are some things that we would recommend from our side that could just make the next two years a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. So, Jill, give us one of those. That's a great question. And I would I would really recommend starting with an initial consultation with one of our college counselors um, just to get everyone on the same page. So what we do is an initial like 30 minute consultation, 30 minute meeting just to kind of go over and understand the students goals, needs and just provide some of those insights into, you know, maybe some different colleges that they should be looking at yeah. or, you know, kind of what let's have a sit down meeting. Yeah. And really evaluate what what we're looking for in the yeah. next couple of years. What what's important to to you? Well, mm-hmm. I think we're we try to be as as focused on the values of the family as possible Mm -hmm. in the process. And I think this is a a good time. This is a good opportunity to kind of start thinking about that and identifying what is important and what is not, uh, in, in colleges, in the process, Mm -hmm. in (laughs) what it looks like for the student is the the student, the 100% priority or sometimes parents allow themselves (laughs) to be uh, an important factor, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just kind of figuring out what that looks like yeah. uh, for, for the family. And this, I think the sooner you can have that conversation, it gets you down the right path. Because there's a lot lot to the admissions process. And if you save it all for the end, Yikes. oh, man, yeah, it's very stressful. Right. I'll tell you, I was doing all of that my senior year while playing varsity football. And I was so senior much. class president. And yeah. I had AP classes. And it, it was just a lot. And, and so even, I didn't spend, I didn't spend as much time on it as I should have. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, you were super busy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, what, how many colleges are there? Are there like 3000? Yeah. Some of them have closed yeah. sadly right. this past yeah. year, I've seen quite but, a few of those. or merge right. honestly. Um, but even if you can, you know, narrow down what you're looking for in a college, for sure. do you want a state school? Right. Do you want a private school? Do right. you want a really big school? Would you rather have a, a small school? What, right. what are you looking for? Yep. You know, if you can kind of start thinking about that, um, that's going to save a lot of time. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think the other piece of that, like 
there are so many, not, not only just so many colleges, but there are so many careers, yeah. right? I, I don't remember the exact stat and, you know, the, you know, the funny thing, like 80% of stats are made up on the spot. Like, oh, well, 80%, I don't know. Okay. So maybe it's 90, I, I maybe don't, it's 80. <laughs> I don't know the actual, I don't remember the actual statistic behind this, but like a large number, 40, 50, 60% of jobs that exist now didn't exist like 15 years ago. I totally believe that. And the same thing's going to hold true for the future. Mm-hmm. So kind of keeping your, uh, your finger on the pulse of, of different careers can make a big difference because mm-hmm. there are literally thousands of careers out there. And most high school students are aware of a handful, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, even even if you know 12, like if you get a high school kid to tell you 12 careers, like yeah. that's, you're doing pretty well. I would say, yeah. And there are a lot of opportunities out there. So I think kind of kind of exploring that along the, in, in this first first initial con- conversation, I think mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. I agree. Yeah, so, that's a good point about all the careers that don't like, first of all, don't exist from 20 years ago. Right. 15 years ago, 10 years ago. I mean, do you remember like like the dot com craze in the 90s oh, yeah. and then the bubble bursting and all that? And that was all unfortunate. But man, people were talking about the Internet being a fad, like it was going <laughs> to fail. <laughs> <laughs> and then now here we are 20, 20 25 years right. later and to your point it's ubiquitous. people are building mansions because they're influencers right like right. that is That's the all they do. truth yeah they they sell yeah. clothing and items different things beauty all the things all the things yeah anything all on social media yeah hmm. it's crazy and yep. I'm kind of wondering like how long that's going to last as well. Is that here to yeah. stay? You, you would think. I, I would think so, would, but totally. who knows? I mean, I can't imagine how something like that would fade quickly unless mm-hmm. the new me, like a new media pops up. Right. And there's a new mode of communication, mm-hmm. which we can't even imagine at this point, right? Right, exactly. It's pretty bonkers. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy to think about for a second, but Okay, quick question. I'm here for it. Did you have a MySpace account? <laughs> yes. Okay, talk about I social did, media. but only for like a hot second because I really held off on social media for quite a while. Mm. So I had a MySpace account and I like, and you, you know, created the background. I was friends with Tom. He was my BFF. <laughs> and like, I, you know, you can like change the background oh, and kind yeah. of design the your own page. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. So I was really caught up with that. And I only had a few friends because I was so caught up with <laughs> like designing that page. That That's awesome. That by the time, anyone. yeah, by the time like Facebook kind of took off, I was more onto Facebook than yeah. MySpace. So I did have an account, but I really didn't put much effort into like making the friends. Yeah, no, it's more I get about it. the space, MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> nice, so cheesy. Tom really liked your page, I'm sure. Uh, he did. He really, he really appreciated did. you took all that time. Yeah, did you? I'm sure you did. Oh yeah, I had a MySpace. Um, I, it was right after I graduated from college is when I got my MySpace. Mm-hmm. And this was, I guess, the summer of 04. Oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah. and again, I had it. And a lot of high school kids were on it. So we were, I was recruiting at the time. So it was like an easy way oh, to like right. connect and answer mm-hmm. questions and whatever else. But. Yeah. Like an instant chat. Right. Crazy. I held off. So weird. Um, on Facebook until 2008. Wow. Which yeah. was pretty. That's pretty late. Yeah. It was. Huh. Because it started in the fall of 05. What a tangent. I think it started in the fall of 05. And I Mm -hmm. think I joined. No, I think it was even before that. I think a lot of people joined in like 06. I joined in the fall of 05. Yeah. But I was in, I was living in Boston at the time and that's where it was founded. So I think it's kind of spread from college to college there. Yeah. A little bit. And then. I've, well, anyway, I've only had Instagram for about five years. I was really late to the game on Instagram oh, too. All right. So, yeah, I just didn't want another, you know, form of media to scroll on my phone. Isn't that tough? So I held off for as long as I can, and I'm glad I did because it just occupies so much of my time. But yeah. It's mindless. So. Right. Yeah, I've I've tried to cut back over the years. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway. Okay. Moving on. Huge tangent. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. Yeah, right. Um, so again, establishing that connect uh, consultation, excuse me, that initial consultation to get everyone on the same page, yep. develop some goals and needs for the specific student. And, and again, answer some questions. Right? Yes. 
right? Yeah. That, that's a great opportunity to, you have an expert right there with you, mm-hmm. ask the questions that you have, because uh, again, hopefully we can either either tell you the answer or mm-hmm. point you in the right direction. Yep. So Great. Um, the other thing that is so important between your sophomore year and junior year is getting that free practice test in. Yeah. That free practice ACT test that we offer every Saturday morning. How many times have we told everyone this? Wait, wait. Every how podcast. Often? Every podcast, probably. <laughs> so, and, and, and this is the a little bit of a caveat, right? If you're, if you're sophomore took or or maybe almost junior now Mm -hmm. if they took algebra two as a sophomore and you feel as though they're pretty mature kids Mm -hmm. like have them come in and take the test they they aren't really going to learn much if anything during junior year that's going to help them on the test yeah um so let's get this process rolling and figure out a test date we can plan a lot more yes uh, do what's exactly right for the student love that yeah here's an example so i have two neighbors that have girls that are finishing up you know sophomore year and they're just a little bit different academically. One of them hasn't taken Algebra 2 yet, and I ha- I've had both moms ask me this within a month, right? You know, one of the girls, it's just not the right time for her. She should take it next year. Like, it's yeah. she just hasn't had Algebra 2 yet. It does not make sense for her. The other girl, you know, she wants to be a doctor. She's already had Algebra 2. Like, she's, yeah. she's ready. She's ready sure. for it. So, again, like friends, neighbors, two different, two different yeah. paths. And that's that's fine. We want yeah. to do what's right for our for our students. Yeah, but I both mean, of the moms were like, "When should I take this test? Like, process? when? Yeah. yeah, when should they take the test?" So yeah, shoot us a message process. anytime you want. Yeah. So then, after that practice test and establishing that baseline score, uh, we will make a customized ACT recommendation. So during the scores back, we'll have a conversation, better understand the needs, mm-hmm. and actually under like kind of look at the actual results. Yes. And and talk about what the test is all about. And then we'll make some good recommendations based upon the, the current situation, mm-hmm. right? Um, and again, we try to do everything as intentionally as, as we possibly can and customize to the student. Yeah. So this is once we have the scores in hand, it's a great time to really dig in and, and have that more detailed conversation. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, we'll we'll make sure that, you know, the, the test date is right for the student, yeah. how best to prepare for the test, yeah. whether, you know, fitting into a standard course or an advanced course is going to be yeah. sufficient for the student or, you know, maybe they need private one on one tutoring. Sure. Um, just depending on on their scores. But right. we don't know until we have those scores. Right. So that's that key piece for yeah. that practice test. I would say another piece to highlight is meeting your high school counselor. And I know we've talked about this on previous podcasts as well. I did not personally know my high school counselors. I did not take advantage of that. Right. Um, I know you said you did a little bit more than I did. How important do you think that piece is? I, I think that it's a... I think the earlier you can make the introduction and have the conversation, the better, Mm -hmm. Um, especially if this can be driven by the student. Um, I know not all students are going to be self-motivated in this way, or maybe they're introverted and they just aren't comfortable going by themselves. Mm -hmm. But I think having that conversation with uh, either the guidance counselor or if your school has a college counselor, making sure that you're making that introduction, just trying to get on their radar. Right. Anytime you can have as many people on your side moving in one right. direction, the better. And it could come down to, again, if, if you've actually met with these individuals, maybe you stand out a little bit more and they're going to give you just a little bit better recommendation than somebody mm-hmm. else or whatever it may, may right. be down the road. Right. And maybe you don't have to meet face to face right away. I know True. you mentioned that introvert piece. Yeah. You know, shoot them an Send email or connect with them on social media. Right. Like we were yeah. talking about, everyone has social media now right. and everyone's active on it um or I, school I, portal or right yeah, I, I would so say the ways. counselors don't really care how you connect with them as no. long as you connect with them yep so i think that's so many different options nowadays for sure and and again i think some of this is going to be naturally happening as kind of paths for for courses kind of start diverging even yeah. more later in in the, the high school career um and just trying to figure out what what classes should I take. Mm-hmm. Now, again, this would be a great conversation with with your counselor. But I, we generally we don't recommend a student just take all AP tests or right. all, sorry all AP classes just take all the AP classes. Mm-hmm. Right. It, we want you to find a balance. Find the courses that 
most interest you. Mm -hmm. Don't overwhelm yourself. Sometimes we get we get the question: Should you get an A? Mm -hmm. Is it better to get an A in a regular class or a B in an AP class? Mm -hmm. And the right answer is an A in an AP class if you're looking at a selective or highly selective right. school, right? So. At, at that point, you want to make sure that you are not overextending yourself. You've, you're striking the right balance mm -hmm. for the semester. So Yeah, I love that. That's a good piece. And then our extracurricular activities. So here's a question for you. Mm. Our college is more impressed with students who have a handful of activities for multiple years, say, mm. you know, three, four, five activities for, you know, all, you know, three years, four years, as opposed to, you know, 10 different activities, 10 different clubs that they're in for two to three to four months at a time. That's a great question. I think if if colleges see maybe freshman and sophomore year, you're kind of dabbling and you're figuring out what you're interested in. Um, but by junior year, hopefully you've found some things that you love mm -hmm. and that are a good fit. And then you're starting to stick with it. So mm. I think kind of a, a little bit of a mixture. Yeah. I, I think it's it's tough to just to jump into something and, and love it right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And it's the only thing you've tried, right? So right. sometimes you have FOMO. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> Um, but I would, I, I would recommend kind of testing out, figuring out the things that do make sense as an underclassman yeah. and then as a, a junior and senior, uh, really dig in and start taking some leadership roles. I think that's the piece that mm -hmm. really stands out when applying to colleges is when, a, when the student is in, not only involved in dedicating their time and energy and, and consistently, but also taking that next step. Yeah. That's a really good point. Peers. So, Good point. I love that. And sometimes you have to be involved for more than three or four That's months true. to take on a leadership role. Yeah. Sometimes those leaders graduate. Right. And that, and then there's a space to fill. Right. I'll let you talk about a piece that we think is really great, more towards the college counseling side. Yeah, absolutely. So we have, we have some new tools, basically some templates in which you can kind of begin planning and setting your your student up for success mm -hmm. uh, when applications come open just before senior year. And let me just insert here. I've seen the templates and they make so much sense. The, they're very easy. They're straightforward. Yes. They're collaborative. Yes. Um, and, and again, very organized. I, I know other people could make similar things, but it's done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to think about it. It's done. It's just plug and play. Um, there are some samples for kind of to, to kind of guide you along the way. Mm -hmm. It's just, there are some really great resources. So if you want to learn more about those, feel free to reach out. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we can also have a conversation and we can walk you through how to use them best. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. And if, yeah, again, if you even just want to look at them and see if this would be a good fit for your student, um, they're like Caleb said, they're plug and play super easy. Um, it just kind of organizes everything that the student is taking for classes and activities and mm -hmm you know, down to teachers and grades and right. it just makes sense. Yep. Makes sense. And, and maybe the most important piece and here's a little sneak peek, but like making sure you're taking notes on, on a lot of these different pieces. Oh, right. Because when you go to ask for references, guess what? Mm -hmm. You, if you have some notes and you have some good ideas and you have the people right there, it's, it's easy. It's yeah. basically done for you and you can just make the process much more smooth. Awesome. Love it. And I think the very last piece, right? And we kind of mm -hmm. talked about this towards the beginning, but let's have some fun. Like yeah. this year has been so stressful and just the mental health of everyone has just been yeah. such a struggle. So let's, let's have a nice time. Let's yeah. have fun. Enjoy hang out yourselves. with your family, hang out with your friends. Yeah. Don't stress out too much. Like, get, out, get outside, do, do something active. Yes. Go to the beach, go to the lake, go to the pool. Right. Wear your sunscreen. Of course. Go on family vacation and enjoy unplug. For sure. Be I present. think that's pretty important. Yeah. I've, I've definitely learned that about myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to get out to the golf course more frequently than I do. Yeah. Just because it's a good release and I get right. to take a good deep breath. So absolutely. I love just, you know, in the afternoon, grabbing a cup of coffee, iced coffee in the summer <laughs> with a book and just going out on my patio for even mm. just a half an hour and just relaxing. That sounds nice. It's very nice. Just in nature, listening to the birds mm. chirp. It's wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. Very good. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to our podcast. We appreciate you. We appreciate all of our listeners. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. 
uh, swipe up and subscribe. And uh, if you want to give us a five star review, we would love it. Yeah, of course. So great. All right. Mm. Well, we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. See ya. High school can be tough. We'll help you navigate some of the areas you need help with, including the college preparation process by providing advice for families. Every student is different and has a unique path. That's why we created this podcast. Our innovative and intentional approach builds confidence in the individual student. Listen each week to find out how students can score better on college placement tests with techniques and methods that build confidence, beat test anxiety, and identify strengths within each student. You're listening to Simply Smarter with hosts Caleb and Jill. Check out our blog at GetSmarterPrep.com for more college prep related topics. Thank you.